Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Today, I was looking at the new, the upcoming Toyota Tacoma, the 2024 Tacoma, and I think they've made a couple of mistakes on it. Now, bear with me. We're going to get into it. First, we've got to go out, and I'll show you, for point of reference, uh, the existing Toyota Tacoma. This is a 2023 and we're going to start off in the front end because I think Toyota kind of screwed up the new one when it comes to this. But take a look at the front end of the existing Tacoma, the Gen 3, particularly right down here under the bumper. And I am talking about the chin strap or the lack thereof on the TRD off-road. On the Sport, it comes with a chin strap, which can be removed. Now, next up, let's take a real quick look inside the existing. And I'm talking about the infotainment area. This whole area right here. So remember those things, and I might snap a picture of them up as well. But now, let's uh, head into the garage where it's a little cooler than it is out here in this bright Texas sunshine. It is already hot and it's, I don't know, when I made this video, it's probably eight, nine o'clock in the morning. So they did change the body style a bit of the new Tacoma. Let's go over here to the wall. I've got the original picture that I had taken a while back or printed a while back um, of what the Tacoma was supposed to look like. This was kind of a pre-picture, if you will. Now we've got what it does look like over here and then the interior over here. We're gonna start off on the exterior, what I was just talking about. Remember what the front end of the existing Tacoma looks like. And look down here, look at the whole front end here. It just looks kinda, of, I don't know, Chevy-ish, chunky-ish to me. Right down here, we have this added chin strap. Now, this is the sport model, and you can see how much bulkier it makes the front end of the Tacoma look. I mean, look at the edges down here on the side, and look how low this is. Now, maybe it's just perspective in the picture, I don't know, but if you look over here, it looks a heck of a lot lower as well. Much different than what the pre-pictures showed. Look how much height there looks to be between the tire or the rather the edge here, and then the bottom as compared to right here. Looks a heck of a lot lower over here to me. But this treatment of the front end, two things. One, aesthetically, it's not very pleasing, at least not to me, and it's going to limit what you can do with the truck if you're into off-roading and things, because you're going to have to be aware of where this part is. Now, I have heard, and of course this is rumor because we don't actually have our, the truck to look at yet, uh, but I have heard that there are screws underneath that chin strap, much like the third gen, uh, that you can actually pull it off. My concern there is the treatment on the edge right down here. I am assuming that it's like this. So it wouldn't be a big deal, and I actually like the look of this one a little bit better. It looks sleeker, more narrow, if you will, shorter. Um, yeah, we shall see. Maybe this one just looks a little bit off because the hood scoop kind of raises it up a little bit here on the hood, makes it look a little chunkier. But I think if you remove this piece, I mean, look at that. I think that's a much better look for the truck. And that's just holding my hand up here. Not digging that, think they made a mistake in the treatment here. I think it should have been if they had to have it at all, and I think they should have left it off. It should have been a little bit narrower, I think. Just doesn't look very good and limits the capability of the truck. Now, if we move over here to the inside, I've gotta say, I do like a lot of what they've done. I wasn't really a big fan of this Toyota over here, and I realize different trim levels might have a different treatment, right? In other words, if you go more base, this is probably a fully loaded version. Then you may not have Toyota over here on the dash part. And eh, I've kind of grown to like that. It's not such a big deal. At first, I really didn't. And it's hard to tell from the picture whether this is flush or not. It almost looks like they stuck some Toyota letters on the dash part here and it's raised. I hope not. Hopefully it's some kind of uh, embossed or stamped piece, if you will, as opposed to being up in the air like that. 
Now, the big thing, this, this infotainment system. I mean, look how out of place that looks. Looks to me like a computer screen that they just kind of stuck right inside the truck. And over here, and I know this is probably just uh, perception, but it looks like it's covering something here, and I'm sure it's not. I'm guessing this silver part right here, not what's under my finger, is actually part of the radio screen. Of course, we do have the, the button here. I'm assuming that's ignition. Um, real close to the edge. So hopefully this screen part right here is nothing that's active so that every time you miss this button, you don't do something to your radio screen. I think it's poor integration. I don't like the way that it fits in there. I think it looks very out of place. Again, this is the bigger screen. I'm sure the lower levels will have something smaller here and probably look better, probably be more integrated. It's too bad that they didn't kind of move this section down here a little bit. Maybe there's not enough room in front of the shifter. And then push the radio or infotainment screen down a little bit. I would have even been okay if they had integrated the controls, at least some of them, into the screen electronically. Still want to have some buttons and things, but eh, I don't know. Now, the other thing I'm noticing about this screen is I don't see any volume knobs. To me, that means everything is going to be controlled electronically. And if you're aware, some other companies have done that in the past, specifically Honda. They put a radio in that did not have a true volume button on it, and people hated it. And they hated it so much that Honda had to change the radios in those cars in the next versions or whatever to add that volume knob back in. I think we just love volume knobs. We don't want touch buttons, little things that you have to slide up and down, whatever they are, we need a volume button. And I'm not seeing that on this screen. Again, this is a pre-picture, I'm sure, although it is from the web. Um, maybe there's something hidden somewhere else, I don't know. Maybe this is a volume knob, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm really not sure, but nonetheless, it doesn't look good. The other thing I think is that it kind of blocks your view a little bit. Now, I realize you're not going to be sitting back here in the rear seat somewhere, and it doesn't matter whether you can see out or not, but look at the screen, the size, the opening of the window, what's available to see. It just protrudes up too far, in my opinion. It's too bad. They could have shrunk it a little bit, made it a little bit uh, less wide, narrower, if you will, or shorter, I guess is a better word and given us something that looked more integrated. Anyway, as compared to the third generation, I think those are two uh, mistakes that Toyota has made on this truck. Everything else is great. I do like the way that it looks. I like everything else about it. Can't use the word love yet because I haven't fallen in love with this truck. Leave a comment. Let me know if these things matter to you or am I just being too picky? I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.